Boxing on the flute, which is a blending of kind of street techniques with classical flute playing, uh, and it is a very rhythmic approach to the flute beyond the traditional lyrical approach to the flute. Bass is really the true rhythm, just walking bass and playing bass. So it starts there with my rhythmic thinking is, you know, just with playing that pits bass and really having that driving rhythmic force. Then when I saw Greg doing all the beatbox stuff, I knew that I had to take it from that, uh, you know, the, the regular rhythm and, and pulse of the bass and then take it even farther and try to figure out some other places on my instrument to play. I do a technique on the cello that's a derivative of bluegrass technique called the chop. And the chop is a way to make a kind of snare drum hit uh, on the cello. Uh, obviously Greg uses beatboxing. Peter will actually physically bang on his instrument and use it as a drum. But further than, uh, than that even is our sense of pulse. And our sense of pulse is really strong. And it's, it's the rhythm that's not being heard that really drives our, our rhythmic aspect of our group. It's, it's not necessarily the actual drum hit, but it's that underlying current of pulse that we're feeling together that ultimately we project onto everyone else in the audience. I really thought that um, this was a, a place to take it because we're really into using every part of the instrument, you know, trying to make the group sound um, like something you've never heard before. The neatest things about having an ensemble with flute, cello, and the double bass is that no one has written music for this ensemble. So from the very beginning, we were forced to arrange other people's music and write our own music. Um, and so that has helped us uh, have all of these different sounds on the stage in these different genres. Music and, and movement go right together, and uh, we are very much in the classical tradition of this kind of interaction with each other. And we are moving not only just to be energetic and everything, but it has a lot of musical purpose. We are cueing each other, we are leading as much as we are following. So as much as I'm giving out with my motions and my breathing and my playing, I'm taking in what the other guys are throwing out. And it's that unified uh, energy that really comes together. I've always been a very outward player. I've always loved to smile big when I play. I've always loved to bang my head around when I play because I, I don't know, and it's something that is natural that from the very beginning of my playing, I've always, always done it, always loved to get into it. I love making music with people and I, when I used to play in orchestras, you know, it's a little more, it's a little more regimented and you do have to stay still, but I, I still was really wild back in my orchestra days and trying to make eye contact with people and, and you know rock out with them and stuff and so now that we have our own group and we can do whatever we want I feel like I can take all those natural feelings and then really you know even take it a step farther and, and really do what I want to do. We kind of relish in having people watching us and listening to us but we don't we don't really talk about our moves we are just now um, uh, we all give each other the green light to do you know whatever we want to up there and so we just feel it I care what our audience is doing and like if I feel the audience is yeah, the energy's low out there I want to bring that energy up I want to make people smile when you play I want people to walk out of the show and be like man that was so fun these guys were having a blast and it's because we are having a blast <laughs> Had I seen a cello player 
play jazz and rock and roll and do percussion on the instrument, I might have come to those sounds earlier and had more time to develop them. So now I get the opportunity to play for a 12-year-old who maybe is into the electric guitar, but maybe they play the cello, and maybe they can find ways and I can show them ways to make their cello sound like an electric guitar and you see their eyes light up. Our hope is that instrumental music, our type of music, classical music, jazz music, uh, live instrumental music, we are hoping that it doesn't die out, that it continues, that it grows. And the only way to do that is through education. That's why we're in there seeing kindergarten kids, K through 12 and K through college, and that's why we're taking high school and college age kids, and we're trying to not only infuse fun, but also give them some skills that maybe over the next 10, 20, and 50 years, we can see a resurgence. So many of our ideas stem from our our experience with a classical, traditional upbringing and training. So the camp, all of us went to music camp when we were a kid. This is how you learn. You learn music from listening to music and listening to other people play music. And when, when you go to a camp for music, you get with like-minded people, and that way you can flourish your ideas even faster or take you in another direction and learn about all the things that we're up to and, and all of the styles. And we love, again, just teaching these kids about what we're up to and how we approach music. We always say that we wished we would have played for ourselves when we were younger. We are excited to make our instruments relevant in young people's lives. It's extremely important to bring music into the schools, um, to stimulate people um, about these instruments, and to showcase that they're not just something in a museum or on a concert hall, but they're really interesting, and they can play music that the kids relate to, and that uh, anyone can learn to play these instruments.